we please talk about how when you really huh? analyze Prison Break and the plot of the show, you realize that it doesn't make any sense. Like it has a big plot hole and I wanted to discuss it with you, okay? President Business stole the Kraggle, the most mm. powerful object in the universe. Blah, 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 blah. Proper name, place name, backstory yeah. stuff. Bear with me, okay? Before you come at me talking about like, oh, Prison Break is peak, Prison Break this and that is very good it is especially the first season it's so good but i just cannot believe that nobody thought that michael schofield was suspicious as f in the first episode he robs a bank in the middle of the day because when you look outside you see that the sun is out and not only that but the person the worker from the bank tells him like oh the manager is at lunch so we can assume that it was 11 a.m or 12 p.m it was the middle of the day and when you look at his background like he's a structural engineer he lives in walker drive or in canal street because when we look at the view that he has of the river walk chicago girl he is 60606 meaning he has money so when you tell me that a person that lives in downtown chicago robs a bank i can't help but be a little bit confused and on top of that he doesn't have any criminal background so i know this is just a show but it's just almost like he wanted to get caught he wanted to get caught and i know i know he wanted to get caught because that is part of his plan like we know this but nobody was suspicious nobody said like wait you have money why would you rob a bank why would you do this in the middle of the day it just doesn't make sense and on top of that the bank that he robbed behind him you see marina towers marina towers towers is located in downtown chicago right there in the riverwalk like boy they are going to catch you i mean i get his intentions but my thing is that nobody found that suspicious and on top of that nobody from his job was like wait what i know how much you make because we work in the same place and let's say somebody else was a structural engineer like him like bro i know how much you make so why is it that you decided to rob a bank so nobody from his job was suspicious on top of that the other thing that doesn't make sense is that this man is so beautiful <laughs> Again, nobody from his job was like, wait, where's that beautiful engineer at? Oh, he robbed the bank? Why? I feel like it's a little bit of a plot hole that they didn't include nobody from his job visiting him in prison or being a little bit suspicious about what is it that he's trying to do. Why he did what he did again in the middle of the f day? he goes to prison i know that him and his brother have different last names i know it so it's not obvious that they are brothers but then once he is inside when he is about to get transferred he tells the warden like oh lincoln burroughs is my brother and i want to be here with him didn't it click in the warden's mind like oh that will make a little bit more sense why this man who has a career is an engineer and had his whole life ahead of him decided to rob a bank decided to commit a crime to come to prison now i'm not saying that the warden should have known that michael was trying to break lincoln out but i'm just saying that something in the warden's mind should have clicked and maybe he would have been a little bit more suspicious like also oh, you decided to commit a crime to come here to prison with your brother but at the same time that doesn't make sense because you could have visited your brother like there's no need for you to be inside the prison to be with him when you could have just visited him and see him does that make sense so i feel like there that moment when he said he's my brother the warden at least should have be a little bit suspicious about what were michael's intention like i feel like it's very obvious that his intentions are not only to be with his brother in his final moments but there's something else going on i know i know it's a show but i feel like the biggest plot hole in prison break is michael schofield and the fact that he He's so beautiful. One thing's for sure, you're just as pretty as advertised. Prettier even. <laughs> What's that smell? It smells a little like conspiracy. I have a question for the culture. If you were in Sarah Tancredi's position, meaning that this beautiful man right here tells you after kissing you, he tells you, hey, can you leave the door open for me? Would you have done it? 
but you have left that door open for him it was very dumb of him to tell her leave the door open for me he should have told her to stay in the office in the room so when he comes to the room she is there and he could have faked oh i took her hostage i cuffed her hands and made her open the door for me because him asking her to leave the door open for him i think it was obvious that she was going to get some repercussions or some consequences for leaving the door open for him and on top of that she admitted it like very easily she was like yeah i left the door open for him i think it would have been smarter if he had told her stay here and we're gonna do a little fake fakey and then she could have walked away from the situation like oh i was just here walking and they came in huffed me and made me open the door the other thing that i don't understand about prison break is the relationship between them because in the first season sarah and michael have a lot of sex Tension. and a lot of it had to do with the fact that she's the doctor he's an inmate and they cannot be seen together they cannot be together period but once he got out and she's out and they are together like in the run they didn't seem like crazy for one another like baby <laughs> i don't want to be explicit but if this man if this man i'm just gonna say that if this man okay every time they have a scene together in season two you don't feel the connection like what the Happened. like i wanted to see that romance and i know i know i know what you're gonna say but oh but prison break is not a romance show like i know i get it but a lot of the plot between them is the fact that they are in love so i want to see that and then it didn't happen and then boom so they kiss once in the prison in season one they kiss again in season two in the train then in season three they're not together and then finally in season four is where they get into it i'm gonna be very honest i do not understand how they waited that long because again going back to the plot between them they had a lot of tension in season one so where do you finish So then when they finally get together and when they finally have no restrictions, I would have expected them to be like very infatuated with one another. But where is the tension? Where is it? Going back to when they finally get to it in season four, because I will be so pissed. Listen, after that, then she's like, oh my God, I might be pregnant. Like, girl, let me tell you something. If I do a favor for you like that, that I leave the door open for you so you can escape. Now I have my criminal record is now because of you. You kiss me two times. Then when we finally get to it, you get me pregnant in the first try. I will be so I'm going to be honest with you. Like he is a beautiful man. Yes, he is. We, we know that. But he low key up like and i know that then she got exonerated of her crimes whatever but then she got charged with murder so then she goes back to prison and now she's pregnant <laughs> like bro <laughs> i will be losing my mind i will be losing my mind like this man really came into my life and fucked me over like we kiss twice we get intimate once he gets me pregnant and then i go to prison for again saving his ass from his mom I cannot explain to you how pissed I will be. And on top of that, the other plot hole that I found was, how is it that you got an exoneration, but then they are going to charge you with murder? How is that possible? You just told me, you just gave me a paper telling me that my slate is clean, meaning that all my crimes are gone, but then you want to charge me with murder? How does that make sense? Like, <sighs> the other thing that I want to say about Prison Break is that for me, season one is just peak. Season two is okay. Like, we needed it because we needed to know what happened after they got out of prison. Like, they were being followed, this and that. And also, the actor for Agent Mahone, he was just brilliant. He was just perfect. Let's get in the back of your car. So, season two is good as well. For me, season three is just so unnecessary. Really, like... <sighs> Season three for me is when they lost the plot. The plot has been lost. It should have ended in season two. In season three, it got, it went like a, a different way. And then in season four, it got too big. And I feel like this is a problem that Hollywood has is that whenever they find something that works, they want to milk it so bad. And then they end up it up. It should have ended in season two. Something that I would say is that from season four, the only good part for me was when Michael breaks Sarah out of prison. I feel like maybe season two should have ended with that, like Sarah going to prison and Michael going back to save her. And season three and season four, are like it's just like, what the f 
are we doing? He's breaking out some Australian dude from a Panamanian jail. I was like losing my mind. These are the things that make me pissed. Because how are you gonna tell me that we are in a prison in Panama and everybody speaks English? Oh, hell no, man. Make that make f sense again you're losing the plot details like that piss me off it's the same thing that happened with narcos they wanted to tell Pablo Escobar story how are you gonna tell me that Pablo Escobar was speaking in English with his man when he was from Colombia hello that pissed me off and then the other thing is that in season four it got way too big for everybody like oh we need to find Scylla and Scylla is six cards and we need to take out the government. Michael Schofield got his tattoos removed in like a day. I feel like it just got way too big and he lost the plot. For me, the thing that made the show was the fact that he got the blueprints in the tattoos and that it was breaking out from that specific jail because he had the blueprints. So that makes sense. But him breaking out of every jail, it's just too much. It, it just got too big. Again, they went Marvel on it. They went Star Wars on it. Sometimes Hollywood's biggest problem is to know when to stop. For me, again, it should have ended in season two when they catch Sarah. That would have been good to have them take her to prison and then have Michael come back from Panama to save Sarah and then he dies in season two. Now, I haven't ended season five. I just started watching season five. I'm on the first episode, so I don't know what the f going on apparently michael is alive he's in yemen again i don't know like i might be wrong this season might be good but i really feel like we have lost the plot what is he doing in the middle east and now he has new tattoos and now he has like another name like ugh. Something I will say, the actor for Michael Schofield, he is still so beautiful, like, I do not understand how this man doesn't have more hype built around him. You know the hype that Nicolas Chavez has right now? Hey Mafia, after what we've been through, I'd like to see you try. That ass perfect, baby. That's how I feel about Michael Schofield's actor. I don't understand why I haven't seen him in more movies. I want to see him in something. He looks like a doll. You can't read the doll. <laughs> older than my dad. The faster the healings, the faster the deliverance, the faster... I have to do you.